Hello and welcome back to EuroFootball Daily's Transfer Review. This is the show where we take a deep dive into some of the biggest rumours doing the rounds on the continent. And today I'm joined by Chris Havel. Thank you very much, Pato. And how are you, beautiful people? Thank you for tuning back in. This week's headline transfer is James Rodriguez from Real Madrid to your beloved Arsenal, Pat. Now let's take a closer look at this. First and foremost, he'd be a very expensive alternative to Riyad Mahrez, who it looks like you failed to get. Second of all, he didn't get an awful lot of playing time at Real Madrid last season, but when he did, the kid banged Pato in the immortal words of Ricky Martin. In 1,500 minutes, he got seven goals and eight assists. That is a contribution to a goal almost every game. In the season before, 2,200 minutes, 13 goals, 13 assists, which shows when the Colombian plays, he's an elite playmaker, Pato. Now let's think about where he'd fit into that Arsenal forward line. If Wenger's going to go with his 4-2-3-1 formation, then you could have Ozil on the left, Sanchez in the middle, and James Rodriguez out wide, feeding the ball through to Giroud, who would eat up those passes like a goat chewing on grass, mate. However, it's clear that Wenger's primary target is a forward, but with failed bids for Vardy, Lacazette and the Icardi saga dragging along, he may want to bolster his midfield with the attacking threat of Rodriguez. And this guy, commercially, is a lot more viable than other targets like the £50 million quoted that would need to shift Lacazette. But Pato, would Real want to sell the Colombian playmaker? Well, it's difficult to say. AS say that there's not really a place for James in the squad. As we've seen, he often plays in a similar position to Gareth Bale, either coming off the right or playing through the middle. But it looks like Zinedine Zidane is going to try and find minutes for Marco Asensio, who scored a blinder against Sevilla in the Super Cup last night, or for Lucas Vazquez, who we saw have limited minutes as a sub last season. Now, if Zidane persists with this 4-3-3, it's hard to find a place for Hammers. He's at his best as a number 10. He doesn't have the legs to perform that kind of all-action box-to-box role, which we saw, for instance, Di Maria perform before Rodriguez arrived in Madrid. But Real Madrid have been remarkably inactive this summer. They've obviously picked up Alvaro Morata, but they might need money in order to make some big purchases before they see out this transfer ban. So it might make sense to shift Hamas Rodriguez and then go back in for David Alaba, who looks like he would fix a couple of problems with their side. I could see Real being willing to sell, but the fee might be sky high. This comes from Spanish paper AS Pato, who tend to know Real Madrid pretty well. Although this article is based on a very flippant, yes, flippant remark that Wenger made to the Telegraph way back when about being a fan of the Colombian. And who isn't? The kid's decent. So what do you think, mate? Is it going to materialise? Well, the fee is going to be pretty steep, we'd imagine. Marker, another Madrid paper, was saying earlier in the transfer window that an unnamed Premier League club had had £71 million turned down for James Rodriguez. Now, if we're talking about that sort of money, I can't see Wenger biting. So I'm afraid, guys, that we don't think this one is a flyer. James is probably staying just where he is. The next story on our radar is Sam Inazri, who is interesting the likes of AC, Inter and Roma, according to Sky Sports. What do you think, Pato? Well, it looks like Nasri might be available for 20 million euros, which is a reasonable price for a guy who's a pretty decent weapon in attack. He is an absolute weapon off the pitch as well, though, <laughs> lest we forget. But this is a guy who could provide something to those teams. He can play wide, he can play through the middle. Inter Milan scored 50 goals last season in Serie A. Milan scored 49. Those were the seventh and ninth best records in Serie A. So they could use some creativity. And you look at Roma, even Roma, who scored more goals in Serie A last season than anyone, I believe, they still will struggle for creativity in the absence of Miralem Pjanic. Mm -hmm. So as a cheap option, Samir Nasri could be a useful one. The Frenchman only played eight times for the Citizens last year and is one of the few reported players to have turned up to Pep's training camp carrying a little bit of extra timber and was forced to train alone. Now, let's not forget the attacking options that City have in abundance. You have the likes of KDB, Sterling, uh, Silva, new boys Nolito, uh, Zinchenko and Sane. So at 29 and on 150k a week, it looks like Nasri's time may be up. And Pep is looking to build for the future. That much has become clear. So should Nasri stay 
which is looking increasingly less likely as he's not been included in the Champions League squad, it may block the progression of someone like Sane Pat. But what do you think? What source have you seen this in? Well, Sky Sports are covering this, and to be honest, they're just saying what we all know to be true. Pep Guardiola is going to want to shift out this ancient Slytherin while he can, and for this fee, it's potentially a good deal for both buyer and seller. Christoph, what's going to happen? As you touched upon earlier, mate, I can maybe see him at Roma as a replacement for Pjanic, but it just looks like his days are numbered at the Etihad regardless, and Pep's going to want to move him on as soon as possible. Next up is another player who could be on his way out of Real Madrid. It's Isco, who apparently is being targeted by AC Milan as part of an enormous spending spree. Apparently, their Chinese investors have a clause in their purchase agreement requiring the club to spend 350 million euros on players during the next three years. Now, Chris, why would you buy it? Well, the little Spaniard is still only 24 Pato and looks increasingly unlikely to feature in Zidane's future plans. So the guy played a very sporadic 1,800 minutes last season with three goals and seven assists, which isn't a bad return, but it doesn't look like he's going to feature for Los Blancos anytime soon as an essential part of that 4-3-3 Zidane likes to play. But with uh, Montez 3-5-2 at AC Milan, he, uh, he may be able to accommodate his sort of luxurious style of play within that midfield. And he might, he might work well with the likes of Suso, Bonaventura and Carlos Baca up front. So they're going to need someone like him, Pato, to avoid another disappointing finish akin to last season. But would the Spaniards be willing to relinquish his services? Does Zidane want to keep him around as a squad player? What do you think, mate? Well, as we've covered with James Rodriguez, there's kind of a surplus of attacking talent at Real Madrid, but there's a paucity of minutes in which to play those guys. Again, Isco doesn't seem to fit into a 4-3-3. There are rumours of weight problems and attitude problems as well behind the scenes. Apparently, Zidane has been very unimpressed by his work rate. Now, this is a move that could make sense for all parties. Real get to recoup some of the outlay that they spent on the guy, and also maybe he goes back to being a big fish in a small pond like he was at Malaga. Possibly that added responsibility would be the making of him. Chris, where have we got this from? Well, yet again, mate, this comes from our Spanish friends at AS, although this time we believe they're reporting on it to put the player in the shop window, effectively drumming up business for the club. However, as you said, mate, the Chinese owners are looking like they want to spend a fair bit of dosh. So, again, like Nasri, he may be heading to Italy sometime soon. Next up is Wolfsburg's Brazilian combative midfielder, Luis Gustavo, who, according to Damasio and Calcio Mercato, may be on his way to Juventus, Pat. Well, we can see why they'd be after him. They've just lost Paul Pogba. And the thing is with Pogba, he contributes both in attack and in defence. Now, on the attacking end, they've brought in Miralem Pjanic, but they may still need a guy to help them out defensively, and Luis Gustavo could be that man. He's experienced at the top level, played in the Champions League with Bayern and VfL Wolfsburg. Now, he's a really interesting, combative player. Also, he's got a great fitness record. Sami Khedira, over the last three seasons, has played just 60 games. On the other hand, Luis Gustavo has played 110. This guy would be a lot fitter than Kadira, probably fitter than Marquisio, could come in and contribute immediately. Although, mate, they have already fended off interest from Italian giants into Milan, and the guy has a release cost of 32 million euros. So unless Juventus are willing to match that price, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. And I don't think Dieter Hecking wants to see him go either. He's already lost a key player in Sherlock. And after finishing eighth behind the likes of Mansby and the likes of Hertha Berlin, they're not going to want to lose any more key players in what was already a very disappointing last year. But, Pato, what is the source saying? Is there any legs in it? Well, we're hearing this both from Calcio Mercato and from Gianluca Di Marzio. So it seems like this is a rumour that is doing the rounds among the people you'd expect to hear about it. However, like you say, it's a 32 million release clause. Inter have reportedly had an 18 million plus bonuses bid turned down, but the rumour is that Juventus have already agreed personal terms with the Wolfsburg man. So if they want to get this deal done, chances are they'll be able to push it over the line. We could see this one happening. This brings us to the final part of our show, which yes, as you guessed it, is the transfer shocker. And this week's features another Arsenal pairing of Giroud and 35 million for Mauro Icardi of all people. Yet again, 
This transfer just won't die away, will it, Pato? We think this is ridiculous for a number of reasons. You have De Boer, he's only just come in, he's not going to want to lose. He's captain. Arsenal need to add a striker. Losing one isn't going to solve Wenger's current situation. And playing in a 4-2-3-1 probably suits Giroud's uh, playing style better than Mauro Icardi's, who had Jovetic by his side an awful lot last season. But you're the resident Arsenal specialist, Pato. What do you think to this one, big boy? Uh, there's no way that this is happening. Whether you rate Olivier Giroud or not, we can all tell that Arsene Wenger does. Like you say, losing Giroud doesn't really help them. If then Akadi got injured, they'd have no strikers whatsoever. Juan Donara and Akadi, it's an absolute circus. Arsene Wenger typically doesn't really like players who cause a big fuss off the pitch. Bids for Suarez and Vardy aside. I don't see this one happening at all. The likeliest scenario is that Juan Donara and Mauro Icardi get a nice new contract, buy a nice new house, and never darken our doorsteps again. Sorry, this is bollocks. Gazetta dello Sport nonsense. Zing. So that brings us to the end of this week's transfer review. Have you seen any other stinkers? Let us know in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out a very special Sky Sports winners and losers featuring Jamie Redknapp and Jamie Carragher talking about the biggest moves of the week. Guess what? Pogba might be in there. Oh, very special indeed, Pato. And as always, guys, do not forget to like and subscribe. Catch you next time.